There comes a moment when you've exhausted all your options while simultaneously coming across a product that reinvents your notion about what an honest and high quality company looks like. The Healing Rose was the catalyst to that very moment for me. The Healing Rose Company is a female-owned Massachusetts CBD company based out of Newburyport that prides themselves in using only the best USDA certified organically sourced ingredients for their vast line of therapeutic products. Their line stretches from lip balms, tinctures, skin balms, roll-on oils, and bath products. Their transparency places them above the rest with third-party tested results showcasing their intolerance to toxic pesticides, solvents, metals, and harmful elements. They provide full-spectrum CBD in many of their products, excluding their tinctures, which carry a broad-spectrum profile, ideal for not having to worry about any low-level THC, which is common for many CBD products. That one's my favorite, and it's good on the palate. Full-spectrum means that they extract from the hemp plant an array of different therapeutic cannabinoids along with CBD and their profile terpenes. The combination results in a greater outcome of healing and relaxation for any individual's needs. Whether you are an athlete looking for any recovery advantage, a patient in need of some relief to remind yourself that you are still a warrior, or someone who sees the frontiers of life with a little reserve and want to calm the mental storms that keep you from personally exploring, the Healing Rose CBD Company is here for your full body and mind optimization. Please visit thehealingroseco.com to explore their diverse line of products and support one of New England's best rising stars in an industry where ethics are fundamental and a company like this will only be found sitting at the throne of it all. Use the code SAGAS, S-A-G-A-S, for 10% off your purchase. Again, visit thehealingroseco.com and use the promo code SAGAS at checkout for 10% off your purchase. To the many martial artists, entrepreneurs, dreamers, and thinkers, how often, for your own sake, would you love a symbolic reminder of your mentality and the perfect dichotomy to match? Murder Nerd is an independent clothing apparel line that represents the sharp, relentless focus towards personal growth and athletics. It embodies the vitality of their creative owners and the network of people who run on the same frequency. Why not elevate your frequency in comfort and style? Visit www.MurderNerdsFitness.com for their personal line of shirt and hat wear. Enter the promo code SAGAS, S-A-G-A-S, for 10% off your purchase. Again, visit MurderNerdsFitness.com and enter the promo code SAGAS for 10% off your purchase. Right here we are once again, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, cat and dogs, you're about to enter the dimension of a sweaty Spanish man. All right, <clears throat> let's see, let me get out of here, let me get out of here. So let's get this started. All right, so this... This is definitely something I think has been on, I know it's been on my mind for a long time. And I think now it's on a lot of people's minds. And I would, I was suggested this idea for this podcast by a good friend of mine, ironically enough, on social media, which is exactly what this kind of has to do with. And the, 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 Kind of the uh, the straw that broke the camel's back really on this was me watching that uh, documentary called The Social Dilemma. And, you know, a couple of people were discussing it and a couple of my good friends were talking about it that I take a lot of, I put a lot of stock in what they say. And, you know, they, they kind of warned me. Well, they didn't really warn me, but they, what they had told me was, I bet you'll know most of this stuff that's in here. It's just that it's compressed in a very good way that's kind of a shock to 
people's systems. And and it's good because it's like I don't I don't know if everyone actually knows how some of these mechanisms work. You know, and that's not to say that they should, you know, it's like everybody's incredibly busy and it's all very cleverly worked into the fabric of our daily life. So to get a good documentary that pulls from a lot of these professionals in all of these companies, whether it's Twitter or Facebook or YouTube or, or Google or whatever that it is, you know, had to have them all in just one place where they're now talking about the mechanisms of um, the mechanisms in, that are at work in holding on to your attention for all of their apps, which in turn for many people can make them mildly or overly addicted to just engaging on these things. And then all of the after effects with that. So I'm like, all right. So, you know, I, I watched it and it was good because there were a couple people on there that, that I had recognized. And one of them who was my go-to guy for a lot of these kind of, I guess you would call them just like kind of cultural phenomenons, especially things that are, that deal heavily with a lot of developmental issues and children. Uh, one of the guys at the end, uh, Jonathan Haidt, he did, um, what was it called? His last book was a, the, the Coddling of the American Mind. Um, he also did a, a book on happiness that I have that I really wanted, uh, I really need to read. But I've watched a lot of his lectures too. Actually, actually he's got one more book. He's got one more book that I, I can't remember. I'm Actually, no, I'm sure he's got a couple books, but... I read that last one and I got really heavy into a lot of his lectures. So, you know, that kind of gave the, uh, the documentary kind of the uh, seal of approval for me. But he had been talking about this stuff for years. And, um, and that's what kind of woke me up to it. And I think it's just on my mind a little more now because... I think because of a lot of things like one because I'm a parent now so now I'm gonna have to try to figure out how to like regulate the internet really and then devices screens um, it's my responsibility to kind of understand the science behind these things now like I was talking to uh, I was talking to a friend of mine and you know I was just saying like We were having this discussion and it's a it's a weird topic to get into with people because their personal use and 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 the ways that people engage in social media it's like it's taboo to tell people that it's that it's detrimental right you want to let people know where you are you want to let people know what you're doing you want to take a picture of yourself you you take pictures or videos of just the most mundane moments in your day. And for some reason, we feel that other people want to see them and people don't. But for some reason, we feel that we need to share it. But in talking about it, it's like it's it, it kind of it can trigger people in a way that gets them very like defensive. And, you know, it, it, it made me think about it you know, a little bit, like, when that would happen, and I was talking to my friend, it's like, you know, when did social media start, like, 2010, maybe 20, like, 2008, I think I started in 2009, I signed up on Facebook, right, when I got out of school, and, uh, it's like, we have data now, like, before, it was just kind of engraved into our social lives, and it was, intoxicated and we love doing it and now it's like it's almost like it's justified because all forms of of business and entertainment are engaged in it right your stupid fucking your your credit union down the street has a facebook now right 
your town hall has a Facebook, your everything, your, your subway, your Chipotle, you, uh, they all have Twitter accounts. So it's just reinforced that this is just how we communicate now, right? It's, it makes it harder to question if these are actual things that we should be using. Because we as just normal people are following suit, right? Well, big business is doing it. All the politicians are doing it. Fuck, now we're even giving kids laptops. So I guess this is just how we learn too, right? So all these different things that even if you wanted to kind of have your own kind of anti-movement towards it, you feel like you're going to be left in the dark ages because, because the world is telling you that this is actually the way and that we're on our way and you can take a fucking hike if you're not coming you know but it's like we have data now right we have data it's over 10 years of data where we can actually analyze a generation that has grown up with it i'm a millennial so typically like it it happened perfectly where i didn't get social media um until like mid 20s or so with this what is it generation z or whatever like they've had it since they were in almost elementary or high school and now they're just getting it earlier and earlier um so like we have data where we can analyze and kind of look at people's mental health and all of the different um pros and cons to to using these things And these are professionals that are breaking down the data. So when the consensus comes back that it's actually detrimental and it's creating a hum of anxiety and and depression in people, like, then where does the offense come from, right? It's like, it's like, we're kind of lying to ourselves in some way, in, in believing that the things that we're doing and the things that we're engaging in, like, that they matter. And for, like, your own peace of mind, like, does it really matter? Like, shouldn't you take advice in that arena of thinking? Because the literature is there now. And I feel like it's peaked. It's not peaked, but it's now thrown a spear into the ethos of just, like, uh, 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 like a into like a greater place of thinking with this documentary. Now millions of people can 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 now look at this and possibly question a little bit of like their usage, you know. And um, yeah, so like you know, so I'm watching the movie. And, you know, there's a couple points on there that I knew, there's a couple points on there that I knew about, but that it really, it really brought it home with some of it. You know, one big one was like, the, you know, this like this, I don't, I don't even know how old she was, like 10 year old girl on there and she's posting and, you know, she's doing the whole selfie thing, like just. It looks hilarious when people take pictures of themselves. Like you catch people. You ever see that? Like you see people taking pictures of just themselves by themselves in some random place. But, you know, making sure that their hair is all right and the eyes are all right. And it's like, it just looks so silly sometimes, you know. And I feel like they would see themselves as silly too. If somebody showed them a picture of them taking a picture of themselves in a parking lot or at a store or whatever it is and you know this girl's doing this and and she's getting all these likes and comments and she gets this one little thing that says uh, mentioned something about her ears and then you see like a couple scenes later where she kind of she kind of overthinks the comment and she's in tears just looking at her own face just valuing her 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 worth really all through the idea of what you look like and now how the world or a perceived world is judging you this girl's fucking 10 years old man and this shit really happens to a much more extreme level too 
you know, it's like, what is it? The suicide rate of, of, of girls went up by 70%. Teenage girls, 70%. I think it was in 20, 2012 to right about now. And it far surpass any of the numbers of the boys because it's like you know there's just oh man there's just so many dynamics to this thing like when you have conflict as a boy the the very peak of it is actual violence it is or even a man right somebody's talking shit and you do it enough and you do enough bullying people are going to start throwing hands and you know obviously you don't want anybody getting killed but it's like depending on the scenario it's over with and we all agree that person a got what they deserved and now we're cool and that's it and it's like all right no more that's what you hope for right but but girls don't do that girls use like character defamation right and they can autonomously or anonymously just break down relationships using social media. It's girls that use social media more than the guys, way more statistically. And it's adding to their just to, to their mental health. And it's just what, you know, like the data is there. What, what, what do we do about it? And is it the fault of the, social media or is it the fault of the people and, and and i don't mean fault as in like i'm not blaming a person it's like are humans even ready for these things right i don't know who said it but there's this idea that like technology is faster than 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 the pace at which humans can integrate and perceive the technology i guess in a certain way and i see it especially with like the the internet right it's clunky you see people with weird ways of <laughs> taking their profile pictures, you know what I mean? Like not knowing what looks good, what doesn't look good, I guess. Saying things that they really shouldn't be saying. Having just useless conversations online. Just kind of spouting out their grievances about just the most mundane, trivial things, which is just like creating more damage to whatever relationships that these people have and it's like it's like the technology is there so it's that we're not we're not like smart enough to use it in the right way because the proof is in the pudding it's hurting us you know it's not it's it's oh man it's i, I, I don't know and i know that this is all going to come off very judgy and i get it right but it's like if the information's there and the reality is that this is something we have to get a handle on, then it's like, then, then the idea of judging is healthy. This is what helped communities survive, right? We analyzed people in the tribe and in the communities and we figured out who was going to serve us, who wasn't going to serve us, who was doing this and who was doing that. And we kicked them out or we rearranged things or we problem solved, right? That th This is actually the good, I, the, it's, it's almost the evolutionary idea of what gossip was, right? But it's just, you know, in the modern day, it's, it's used in a much different way and it's m much m less about survival now. But it's like just sitting back and, and going over all these things, like, like i get it it's it's judgy and it might sound preachy but you know it's all there and it's and there's nothing wrong with taking some kind of like accountability to it right and being humble enough to know that maybe we got to back off a little bit and reassess really what the what the purpose of this like utility is is it a tool right and i know tools can go either way you can build a house or you can kill somebody with them 
And, um, you know, I just, I see it, whether it's the data or whether it's all of these weird scenarios, like, like the, like the killing of creativity, right? Creativity and curiosity to me are like, they are, they're the diamond in all of this to me. You could be so lucky to be somebody who's curious and creative. And both of those things you can cultivate, but to, to be able to have both of those things or just one of those things is so huge. It's huge. And I see like the, uh, the scenario, here's a perfect scenario. And this is one of a million that I see. But now we're so connected that we can see all of these high achievers, right? We can either see high achievers or we can be inundated to just ridicule from everybody else who's functioning on the hum of depression, who wants to throw their bullshit your way. And if you're somebody who, let's say, wants to pick up guitar, right? You used to grind away, pick up the tab books, play, play by ear, put on some music, see if you could follow a riff, start over, start over, start over, until you played and played and played and it was great. Now, you get on the phone, and if you open up YouTube or any of these things, you can see great guitar players, and you can either take it as inspiring, and then as you start, you try to work towards that, or you could be like, I'm not even going to try. These people are light years away from me. And then even if you do try, let's say you want to engage in social media, you throw up your first riff, and people tell you how many notes you missed, or how sloppy it is, or that the, the distortion is wrong, or that the guitar is bad, or that people are, are only paying attention because you're a girl. All these fucking stupid things. And so now you're in this environment where you're trying to share, you're trying to grow, but the feedback loop that you're in and engaged in with all these other people have totally dismantled your drive to want to play guitar. So now you're just back to surfing and looking at a bunch of random videos and doing the same mundane kind of like browsing that you usually do, right? Instead of maybe creating a hobby or create or, or per or building on a passion because it's just easy to just shit on people. And that's what you see on there. And it makes people so hesitant to want to try something like that. And if they do, they have to be almost smart enough to just really just keep it to themselves. And that's what we used to do. You kept it to yourself until you were ready to unleash it onto the world, right? And then even when you did, you didn't have these avenues of information where you're constantly getting feedback, right? As a musician, you'd get it face to face or maybe like a letter or something or an email when the internet was up, but you'd get it face to face. And yeah, maybe you got it seldomly because the douchebags that want to throw all the bad comments your way, they'd never do it to your face. So you're getting way more interaction now because everybody's willing to tell you what they think. Where a few years back, you might only got just a couple good comments here and there, pat on the back, hey, good show. And that meant the world to you, even if it was only from like 10 people at a show. It wasn't dismantling, so you kept working and working and working. And eventually you got up into the upper echelons of just clubs and theaters and other musicians and you found a way to navigate it. You know, and that's just one scenario. That's just one scenario. Let's, okay, let's, let's take this. This, th doing this stupid thing could, could, could kill creativity, right? Oh, nobody wants to hear what you got to say. Oh, you're too judgy. Oh, you, your, your vocabulary is horrible. Oh, you're just fucking crying about all your, your, your sorrows in your life. Oh, all you talk about is pain. Oh, you think you know this, you think you know that, right? And fuck it, maybe, maybe all of those are true, right? But if I just kept getting inundated and inundated with it, it would just tell me that it was a bad idea. And in the end, this shit is really for no one but for me. And I would just keep pursuing it, and I would feel good doing it. And if people enjoyed it along the way, then I'm incredibly grateful for that, you know? 
but in allowing me to kind of talk in this way understand in this way spread information in this way this is helpful for me this is I, I enjoy doing this I look forward to doing these things but if I just got shit on constantly and critiqued over the methods and the ideas then I would just hang this whole thing up and quit it if I was a certain type of person that took a lot of stock in what people said you know it's like the gauntlet of shit you have to go through to figure out if you can be a creative person in the social media age is so different than what it used to be it's so crazy and that's a that's a, a part that I can't stand just the killing of creativity man it's unbelievable you know and then never mind if you're not creative and trying to put something out there you're just somebody that's like it's like a subconscious search for approval right we you see it's like social media brings out these primal psychological behaviors and kind of it amplifies the weird parts of it right we all want to feel respect we all want to feel validated we all want to feel like we're doing the right thing and because we don't in our normal life whether that's because you haven't done anything to earn it or whatever that is or 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 no one ever actually respected you or you're just as i always say running down the echo of some kind of bad behavior or trauma or something that was put on to you that you just didn't deserve and it's made you think that you need to be told that you're something we go looking for it now on social media right i'm going to post this so that i look like a good parent i'm going to post this so that i i look like a a good athlete or that or that i look like i'm busy right i'm getting shit done grind 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 all this stupid talk right or that i'm enlightened or that i am a guru or that i am this and that and this and that and there were it's like it's a fine line to know if people are being genuine and they're really going for things or if there's a small piece of this interaction that's a, that's trying to feed trying to feed an ego that's dying for attention because we all have a voice and we never used to have a voice but we all want to have a voice and now we get the chance to air it all out right <clears throat> and i get that i understand that right you have an opinion you just you want people to know and i just i want people to agree with me and then you put it out there in this horribly clunky way and all of a sudden you've just created conflict because you just can't stand people not thinking the way that you think so you're just going to throw your narrative in there in this incredibly aggressive or passive aggressive way because yet like like I like I was saying it's like we're not hip to the grace in interacting with this technology yet it's it's like it's like five steps ahead of us because we're all sitting here using it and unintentionally making fools of ourselves you know and i i and in doing so you just we're creating divide i create divide you know i i have absolutely 100% engage in social media more when i don't feel good when i'm depressed or i'm anxious or i just feel like the world is is seriously passing me by i'm on social media way more and then what kind of social media am i on i'm on politics i'm on conflict i'm on the votes i'm on the republican i'm on the democrat i'm on this i'm on that i'm on all this stuff that's full of aggravation and conflict and disagreements so that i can escape my own 
shit, really. And I feel it. I can feel when I don't feel good, I engage in the worst parts of social media. And when I feel good, I don't engage at all. I don't look at anything at all. What I end up doing is trying to find, expand ideas that I have, kind of, I guess, using these weird tactics of just like falling down the wormhole, right? That can be very bad for people. And that can be very good if you go into it with good intentions. And it's hard for people to kind of like, kind of define to themselves what is the good intention in looking at some of these things. <clears throat> and yeah, I mean, it's just all of this kind of ends up to just more divide, more more political talk, more throwing up just dis, you know, misinformation and just shitty memes and everybody trying to, like I always say, just kind of play this gotcha game. You know, they want to feel good. They feel like dog shit themselves before whatever reason their fucking life is where it's at. You know, throwing in this Nazi fascist meme will make those three people on my list of friends, you know, that'll make them think twice. Or I'll post this snowflake fucking pro-Trump bullshit. And that'll make these little pussies fucking think twice about the man who's running this country. Jabba, 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 jabba. You know, just... I get it, man. I get it. I get it. We're, We're pissed. We're pissed. We're anxious. And we just gotta air it out. And in doing so, we're not doing it well. We're not doing it with people in front of us. Right? Like, the... I don't even know what you would call it. Right? Like, the good... How do you say it? The normal ways that you kind of interact with somebody in person... It kind of doesn't allow for some of these types of conversations to go without question. So when you question them, you, you break them down a little better. So then people start to actually understand where, where they themselves are coming from. But then, then also the person that they're talking to comes from. No matter what you're talking about. Politics, food, sex, uh, religion, whatever it is. But, you know, all those all that interpersonal physical nuance isn't there when you're doing it online so now we can just say whatever the fuck we want i can go back and forth and back and forth and i'll show you let me just get on google and figure out how i can really reinforce my facts and then i'm gonna post it and then you i'm gonna get you then i'm gonna get you you know like stop with the righteous shit man stop no revolution was ever won in your fucking underwear laying in your bed on facebook It just wasn't. But it's just easy to. And you know what? The dirty little secret that I've come to realize and that I'm trying to embrace, I have some very smart, very successful friends. And the best of them, all of my best friends that are incredible achievers, whether that's in their career or it's in their family life and in their interpersonal life, none of them use social media. And that tells me a lot. The smartest people I know don't use it. And when they do use it, it's in the pursuit of a passion. It's in the pursuit of something that is useful and that people enjoy. They don't throw themselves into weird conflict. They don't throw up a bunch of emotionally thirsty posts. It's none of that. And it's inspiring because it it, it tells me to kind of put the brakes on certain things or just think a little better when you're kind of in this domain. And I just, I got to think twice, you know? You don't think I want to react to half the people that I talk to on the internet, really? You know, I'm just like, oh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, but you know, but yeah, but did you know? You know, we, yeah. 
like it's not my fucking job to educate people it's not my job to enlighten you with a post you know that's just not how psychology works to try to change your belief in something it's just going to reinforce it more no matter how right or wrong i am or the other person is you know and but we still do it we need a voice we don't have control over egos very ego driven and I know it because I do it I've done it and I'm trying to get better at it and my hope is that we find a way to stay connected to a degree like this but that somehow reinforces and rewards more positive um, interactions because the negative ones are actually rewarded. The way these algorithms work, they want you to have conflict because that makes you engage. That's what this document documentary was saying. If shit's all, you know, happy and rainbows, you're not going to say anything. But if something pisses you off, you're going to stick to a thread for a good 20 comments in. Whether you're sitting there observing it or you're one of the motherfuckers trying to throw in your two cents in there trying to win something up on people. And they love it because you're using their app. They got you. They've enslaved our attention. And it's like, what the fuck could we use our attention for? A million other things to make our fucking lives better. You know, if we... You know, we're not missing out. They're doing this? Okay, you're not missing out. I'm not missing out. You know, and it's... The younger we give... The younger these people are that they get this shit, it's going to get worse because it's all about attachment dynamics, right? In the beginning, kids attach to their parents, but along the way, somehow, they start attaching to their peers. And their peers are what? Other 8-year-olds, other 10-year-olds, other 15-year-olds, other dumb fucking kids. So then they build their whole value structure around their peers, which are just as monkey-minded as they are. So now, I need to do this, say that, agree with this, agree with that, all so that my monkey tribe will accept me. But they're all monkeys, so at some point, they'll probably just throw me out anyways. So there's no real rooted trust in any of these people. You know, and this has to go back to like a Gabor Mate book that I have, which talks about parental attachment building, so that that attachment kind of cuts through some of the bad decision making in valuing what your peers say at such an early age because they're all just in, indulging constantly indulging and now you're going to get to witness and see it all and engage in it because you're going to give a fucking eight year old a phone right and they make phones now they make phones where you literally can't download social media and if you want to go even further than that they make digital flip phones where you just dial the number, you can text, you can, you know, use that. And it's like, what other options do we have if we're going to actually make a stand, right? The documentary is out there because something is bubbling. Yeah, I'm fucking bubbling. Holy shit, it's hot. All right. I don't know. I just, I saw the movie and it hit me hard. And, you know, I just, I hope, I want these things to kind of be restructured so that, like I said, positive engagement is rewarded, right? Whatever that looks like, I don't know, I'm not that smart, but I think we're all smart enough to know when something has duped us, right? We're waking up to the hustle that's robbing us of a lot of weird and good potential. The potential in our time, the potential in our ability to reflect and regulate our emotions, right? Because if you just have your phone to run to, it's like, you know, 
You might as well just put a sticker of a pacifier on it because that's what it is. You know, we, we want to push kids to not use their pacifiers when they get to a certain age. It's like, you're just going to give them a fucking another one. And it's in the form of this thing. You know, we're pacifying ourselves with these things. Because every time we're happy or we're sad or we're confused or we're in pain or we suffer, we move towards these things, hoping that something in there is going to help us. And I know this thing is going on way too long, and I wish I made this point earlier, but the opposite side of this coin is that there are good things. I have never been more actually inspired and made real action, real moves in my life more than either between a book that I had been recommended because of something online or online discussions, online podcasts and lectures and just talking to people that I haven't talked to actually in a long time and good conversations bloom out of this and real, real change happens where if you do go down a positive wormhole of how to build yourself up from depression, think things through in your relationship how to get this, how to get that, how to neglect the negatives, push things aside, and create your own individuality. It actually really is all there. So it's not the internet's fault. I don't even think it's really social media's fault. It's a human mind fault. Because we have a choice. We always have a choice on what we engage in. But I know that that choice gets, it can be very hard if we're trying to feel something that never got filled for whatever reason and we're looking to these things to fill it so Jesus I'm gonna pass out all right guys um yeah if you haven't seen the, the movie watch it if y you feel a little icky when you're done but that's good change only happens when you really actually feel uncomfortable don't judge yourself no one's gonna judge you if you end up saying, wow, that's me, what am I going to do about it? Because that's what I did. And I'm still, I'm still me. I might actually be better than I was before the movie. Because I had a new idea to contemplate on what to get out of my life. And now what to put into it. So, you know, just use that weird, that weird vibe as, as, as momentum to something good. Because the movie is done really, really well. It's, it's not a boring, just kind of headshot, talk to the camera thing. You know, it parallels kind of a good, uh, a good played out story that, um, that emphasizes some of these ideas. So, yeah, Social Dilemma. Check it out when you can. And, um, you know, I guess stay connected in the healthiest way you know how. Peace.